Good morning. Welcome to church. Would you stand up with us? I'm be glad to be here this morning. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together as we sing this. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who forevermore will be open. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging seas. My God, He holds the victory. Can we sing this out? Here we go. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out. You move, you make my heart 
you come down would you meet us where we are God and we believe that you are gonna remove the shackles this morning God your freedom is gonna move in this place Lord so God we thank you for your goodness we thank you that when we call in your name God that you show up and Lord you are so good to us you're so good to us in Jesus name amen amen come on give me give God a hand this morning let's just bless him father we love you Amen, amen. You may be seated, and we want to point your direction, your attention to the screens. The way 
of Jesus, the way of the kingdom, was shaking up the established order. No matter what society said about who was in or who was out or what people were supposed to value, they decided that Jesus should inform how they lived their everyday life rather than societal norms or cultural pressure. Community is God's primary vehicle for accomplishing his mission. Jesus is calling each one of us to take part in bringing the kingdom now while we wait for the fulfillment in the future. community for the follower of Jesus is vital, not optional. Hey, praise the Lord. Would you express your appreciation to Pastor Nick and Jordan Pine for the years of service here at CLA? Uh, We love you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. We have a really unique opportunity today. As you know, we've been talking over the last month or so about uh, this day, and it's kind of a bittersweet day, but we're, we're excited to see them step away from CLA, but we're excited about what God has for you. And we're just thrilled to have Pastor Julie, Jim and Julie Dinger from Pathways Church. So, so well, would you welcome them from York, Pennsylvania? It, it's, it's not often that you see the the sending church and the receiving church, or at least that's the way I look at it. And so we wanted to do something really special and unique today and as we pray for them. I'm gonna invite uh, Pastor Nick and Jordan just to share your heart and uh, then we wanna pray for you in just a few moments. Yeah, well, if I can pull myself together after, <laughs> after that moment. Um, uh, the past few weeks have been just lots of hugs and lots of tears. Incredible memories flood back to your mind as you sit with students. And I remember sitting up in the student center just last week and just reminiscing over all the students that have come in, all the ministry that's taken place in that space and in this space. Uh, it really gets you emotional, but we're, we have nothing left in the tank except thank you. Uh, it's all we can say at this point is just thank you. Thank you to this congregation that has loved us and cared for us. We're thankful for our leaders who believed in us and invested in us through these years, we can never say thank you enough. Thank you to our students who have become family, to Jordan and I and Rosemary, it means the world to us. And just thank you to this community as a whole that has truly become our home over the past few years. You've been incredibly formative for our lives. And as we step into a new space in leadership and in ministry, uh, all we leave with is love for this house. Um, I'm reminded of the words from the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians when he asked a simple question, who's Apollos, who's Paul? Servants. It's been a true honor over these years to serve in a, what we would consider even just a small capacity in this house, and we're just so thankful to all of you as you've been a part of bringing us into the family and investing in us. We've received ministry as much as we've given it, and we can't be thankful enough to every one of you. That's awesome. Thank you. I've invited Pastor Jim just to share a few words of what's on your heart today as we pray. Sure. So, Pastor Shane, I don't know if you remember this, uh, but a number of years ago, you and I were at a pastor's conference, and uh, Jordan and Nick had decided at that point in time, still as college students, that Christian Life Assembly would be their home church while they were exiting out of the shelter and protection of mom and dad's homes. And I remember saying to you, Take care of them. Yep. Yep. And so, um, Pastor Shane, you have done that so well. Christian Life Assembly, you have raised up incredible pastors and ministries here at this church, and it continues to blossom under the leadership and uh, the pastoral oversight of Jordan and Nick in certain cases in their respective ministries. And 
I was looking at that same passage that you mentioned today, Pastor Nick, but I, I moved beyond it into chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, and it talks about the body of Christ. And I think as pastors, one of our hardest core values is the value of sending. Sometimes it's easy to, to send off a missionary or somebody that, that's going to go to a distant land, but to send off somebody that you have trained and invested your life in just 24 miles down the road, that becomes a little more difficult, <laughs> at least for me anyway, if I'd be honest. Sure. And I want to say thank you. Nick and Jordan are coming to Pathway Community Church. Pastor Nick's role will be in the area of discipleship. And he has been trained well. Thank you. Thank you for your willingness to develop with open hands. And we are so grateful for the way that this church has handled this transition with full disclosure and nothing but love and an embracement and with the kingdom of God in mind. So thank you, Christian Life Assembly, for your faithfulness. Thank you. Thank you for those kind words. And absolutely. I'm going to invite our pastoral staff and their spouses, our deacons, if they're here and their spouses. We want to pray. I would invite you to just stand and we're going to do what we always do, what we know how to do. We're going to pray. We're going to pray a blessing of God over not only Nick and Jordan and Rosemary, but over Pathways Community Church and Pastor Jim and Julie, that uh, what God has started, he will he will finish and complete in you and that God's gonna do great kingdom work and great kingdom ministry uh, in your life. And so, uh, would you join me? Would you just stretch your hands toward uh, these, this great family? And let's just pray, guys, let's, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you. We're so thankful, Lord, that, that you placed, uh, 10 years ago, you placed uh, Pastor Nick and Jordan in, in, in our care. You place them in our pathway, Lord Jesus. And it's been a privilege and a joy, Lord, to, to watch them grow. It's been a privilege and a joy to, to not only invest in their lives, but to watch them invest in the lives of our students and our church. And God, we thank you for the lives that were touched. And uh, we may not know this side of heaven, uh, the, the, the impact on, uh, on students and on a college age, God, that has been made. And so we pray, Lord, a, a great blessing over Pastor Nick and Jordan. God, we thank you for green light, that we, we were able to help launch a dream, a vision, God, from, that you birthed in Jordan's heart long ago. And God, we pray that that would continue to, to grow and expand for the kingdom of God. Lord, we thank you for Pathways Community Church, for Pastor Pastor Jim and Julie, God, that the, the investment that, 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 that they've made in, in their church and God, that Nick and Jordan are coming alongside of them to fan the flame of the gift of God in that community and in that church. So we pray blessing, we pray anointing, and God, we release them today. We do more than release them. We send them, God, to walk in your will and your purpose for one reason and one reason only, so that you may be known and praised. And so we thank you for this deposit that they've made at CLA. God, expand it, bless it. Order their steps and their days. I pray over Nick. I pray over Jordan. I pray over Rosemary. Let them walk in the anointing and the favor and the blessing of God. We love and praise you today. Amen. 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 <laughs> you got the last word in, Rosemary. Thank you so much. Would you show your appreciation one more time to the deep? I love you guys. Amen. You may be st continue to stand as we already are. No use of sitting down, standing up. But as we transition into this next worship segment, I just wanna encourage you just to open up your hearts to the Lord. I don't know what your week may have looked like, maybe you had a tough week. And especially to those of us that might be struggling in fear, might be struggling in doubt, and uh, maybe you feel alone in that. Maybe you feel discouraged for whatever reason. Maybe you're looking at the news and seeing what's happening around the world. And you're just wondering, what, is, what does our future look like? I just want to encourage you as we sing this song to let the goodness of God be reminding your heart. 
let his faithfulness to you personally be reminded in your heart that we serve a good God. Amen. That he's always been faithful. And no matter what it looks like around us, no matter what it looks like on the news, no matter what it looks like in our, in our workplaces, our finances, whatever it is, that God is good. Amen. And his goodness will continue to, to go on and on forever because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So let's be reminded of that this morning as we sing. Father, we just love you. God, we open up our hearts to you right now. And God, we ask that you just continue to fill this place. Fill this place, Lord.
God, we thank you that there is one name that's above all names. God, that there is one name that we can speak and the atmosphere will shift. God, we thank you that with the name of Jesus, as we speak it, Father, that you enter into our situations. God, you change it. You change the circumstance. So right now, God, we lift up the name of Jesus. We lift up the name of Jesus. I encourage you, church, to sing this new song with us. It says, one name, one name holds every victory. We believe there's victory in the name of Jesus. Oh 
There's one name, one name holds everything to me. One voice that silences the enemy. One King who reigns for all eternity. the name of Jesus, no matter what we're facing, we sing, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, yes, Lord, we trust you. In everything, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, I believe you silence fear too. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you make the 
darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus You silence fear Oh, Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus We trust in your name Praise the name of Jesus. Right where you are, would you just say the name of Jesus? Would you just worship him? Just whisper his name. His name has the power to overcome any situation in your life. His name has the power to, to heal sickness and disease. His name has the power to overcome addiction felt all morning just to compelled to pray for somebody that feels trapped by by some addiction it could be some substance it could be worry it could be anxiety I mean just just speak the name of Jesus over that situation in your life today just speak the name of Jesus over that addiction chains I believe right now wherever you're watching from that the chains of addiction are just falling off of people in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you are our strong tower. In the name of Jesus, you are our refuge. In the name of Jesus, you're our ever-present help in time of trouble. I pray for that person that's struggling today with addiction. They feel bound by something, whether it may be drugs, alcohol, worry, anxiety, pornography. What In the name of Jesus, we pray that the chains of addiction are broken today. I pray for freedom in people's lives in the name of Jesus. I pray for release today from what people feel might be prison bars. I pray it in the name of Jesus, in the strong name of Jesus. Man, if that's you today, wherever you're at, wherever you're watching from, just claim it in the name of Jesus. Claim freedom. Claim release in your life from that from that bondage in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you that we have your name to call on, that we'd have your name to, to speak against the very gates of hell. Thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you for everything you will do in our life. We lift your name today, the name of Jesus. We love and praise you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. <laughs> Amen, amen, and amen. Can we thank the Lord today? Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you, Josh and the team. Great worship. I feel the presence of the Lord here today. And, and we've got a lot uh, packed into the service today. And so thank you for your openness and your, uh, your, uh, your hunger for the Lord. And uh, just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, Easter Sunday, uh, our, our times typically, maybe pre-COVID, they changed a little bit on Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, our times will be the same, 9 and 11, but we have a, uh, a television recording uh, live on Monday, April the 11th. That's the, that's the Monday before, um, before um, Easter. Yeah, I'm going to get it out, I promise. It's the Monday night before Easter. Uh, the purpose of that is, as you know, our television broadcast runs a week behind, and we want everyone that watches on our CBS and ABC broadcast to, to have Easter service on Easter Sunday, and that requires that we pre-record the service, and so we're, we're trusting the Lord for a mighty move of God, and so we encourage you to come. Uh, uh, again, April the 11th, 7, uh, 7 p.m., and listen, as a little treat, if you come on Monday for that recording, the Farm Show Milkshake people are going to be uh, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not kidding you. Listen, this isn't a trick to get you to church, right? We called them. They were excited about coming. And so if you love the Pennsylvania Farm Show Milkshakes, we're going to have them after church on the 11th. And so come for Jesus. Make sure that's your number one reason for coming. But you get a milkshake afterwards. And man, I don't know, church and milkshake, that's like heaven right there. But anyway... You don't want to miss it. Hey, our youth spring retreat, if you have uh, uh, students in your house, 
uh, the place you want them to be April 1st through the 3rd is, uh, is our, our youth spring retreat. Th- this is the last week to sign up. So if you've been waiting, don't wait any longer. Call the church, go to clacamphill.com. You don't wanna miss that. So, hey, we have another special treat today. We have a lot, uh, as I said, packed in the service today. Uh, I'm gonna invite Gil and Dolphy to come. Would you welcome our missionaries from Tanzania, Gil and Dolphy? I have to tell you, we, we support a lot of missionaries, but these two, uh, I, I said, shared with our pastoral staff earlier, just two of the finest people you'll ever meet in the world. And uh, we thank you, we love you, and we pray blessing over you. Thank you for what you're doing for the kingdom of God. And so I'm excited to hear about an update. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. We're delighted to be here. It's been a few years since we've been here, about five years ago. So we're very thankful. And for those of you who don't know us, and maybe those online who are new, Gil and I, I, I'm Dolphy, by the way, and this is Gil. Sometimes people call me Gil and him Dolphy, and that's okay. (laughs) But Gil and I are church planters among the Datog, and we go where there are no churches out in the bush, and that's, we live with them, we plant the churches, and we establish as well with schools. And so we're gonna show you a video. Well, let me, let me just tell you this one thing first. A lot of times it may seem like what we're doing is difficult, um, anything in your life, but if you stick to it, and it's God's plan, it's gonna happen, because Galatians 6, 9 tells us, let us not become weary in doing good, For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So this video is a testimony of God's grace and his harvest. We praise God for his faithfulness. Over the course of the last few years, God has done a great and mighty thing in places that are difficult to reach. Within the Yaida Chini and the Lake Yasi area, there's over 44 church plants. And by God's grace, we're able to put Christian schools in these areas. 
And we just, we just know that without the Lord, none of this is possible. Now, you saw at the very end of this video, uh, going across a salted area. That was uh, as we're moving, or moved as of last November, to a brand new area that is completely, again, unreached. Because on the south side of Lake Yassi, we've planted churches all up that area and put schools there, but now we're on the north side, which is a brand new area. And that place has nothing. There's absolutely nothing. And so we're just believing God to do a great and mighty thing. And I know for one thing for sure is the enemy does not want you to go into places like that because there has been attacks upon our life throughout the past year that we have never seen before. We've dealt with different attacks, but this past year, the enemy has tried to stop us from going there. But we believe that God is greater than that. And we believe that God will do a great and mighty thing, just as he does on the, north, the south side of the lake and, lake and Yaida Chini. He will do in Gasala and the surrounding areas. Yeah, so God is so good. And uh, Dofi and I, we're planting churches among the Datoga people. And I just want to remind you this morning, if we don't pray enough, we can't see anything happen. Because the one we're learning in these areas, if you don't like prayer, it's very difficult because there's a lot of witchcraft, it's very dark. So if you spend your time for busy, 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 even you cannot stay in the bush because it's very darkness, it's a lot of witchcraft. So the one we're learning, the name of Jesus is very powerful. And we're learning because we pray and we're fasting and we see God changes the life of people. Witchcraft, witch doctors accept Christ. We've seen children accept Christ. We've seen women accept Christ because we're asking God and we're fasting and we pray. You know, the one I, I just shocked, and I'm not shocked much, but I shocked because the time we come back in the U.S., and you remember... I don't have enough story for America, but I have a little bit. The first missionaries, the people they're sending first missionary to Africa is America. It's the United States. But each time we come back, the church in the United States right now, they feel comfortable. It looks like it's done. They finish. It looks like it's no more, you know, no more prayer, you know, it's no more fasting. It looks like everything is working. But I want to remind you this. Guys, we need to pray. Not just Africa. We showed the video what God is doing. So I just want to remind you this morning. You still have a lot of work, even here in the United States. It's a lot of people in the United States, in the church, they walk back to the darkness. Outside the church, people, they're living in darkness. People, they're hurting. The church, the church is the church is the only one can help people coming to know Christ. And if people feel comfortable and not pray and not fasting, this is dangerous. And this is happening in the United States because people, they feel comfortable and America, God is blessing. So people, you know, they're just eating. It's not bad for eating, but we're not, we, we want to remember we need fasting. Each time we go speak to the church, we see a lot of people, they laugh. And it's in the Bible. It's showing us the last days, people, they can not following Jesus. And people, because they're not reading the Bible, they're not understand. It's look like, okay, I'm stay home, you know, I can watch. This is joking. This is joking. This is Satan. And Satan switch mind of people, and people not understand. If you don't spend the time with God, I tell you, Satan coming to have a meeting with your mind and you don't, and you don't know, you're confused. This is I want to tell you. If you don't spend the time with the word of God and you're reading and you not have time for prayer, you can feel it, you can think, and you think, oh, this is, this is God. No, it's not. It's in the, you know, this Bible, if you're reading, everything is in the Bible. 
If you don't come to church, it's in the Bible. What is happening? If you don't pray, if you don't fasting, it's in the Bible. What has happened? So I just want to remind the United States, if, we, if you guys, Dorothy and I, we have a list for prayer. We pray for this country. And we've seen what Satan is doing. Satan wants to shift and change the blessing of God and this country coming bad. Look at the freedom you guys have. You know, sometimes I used to laughing if we go to a restaurant, Dorothy and I, you have a menu, you know, you have, you have a menu. It looks like you're reading Bible, you want to do Bible study. This is freedom. It's a freedom. You're choosing what you can eat. And this is a blessing. If people are not focused on God and people do not pray, Satan can switch this country and you say, what has happened? And it's because people, they're coming lazy. So I just want to remind guys, we need to come in to, to, to asking God. We want to fast, we want to pray, we want to preach. This is the only one we can do. Fasting and pray and preaching. I know my English, my English is not good enough, but I believe the Holy Spirit, something spoke to you this morning. Amen. We ask that you guys would continue to pray with us and for us and not just for the Datog, but for the nations of the world. Thank you. Hey, I want us to pray. Would you stand with me? Come on, let's, uh, let's pray. We want to pray against the forces of darkness and uh, we want to pray that God's covering over Gil and Dolphy and we want to pray that more churches would be planted and that God would put on the hearts of people to go. And uh, I, I, just, uh, I, I just feel compelled to the Lord to just pray over you. Would you stretch your hands toward Gil and Dolphy? Lord Jesus, we thank you for these, these choice servants of God that were called and God, they followed your, your call and your leading. I pray blessing over them, Lord Jesus. I pray covering and protection. I pray that no weapon formed against them will, will prosper and every tactic of the enemy would fail. Every plot against the enemy would crumble in the name of Jesus Christ. God, that you would order their steps, their path would be smooth. You would fill in the rough places and the ditches and everywhere they go, God, you've gone ahead of them and you've prepared the way and the place. I pray for resources to come in, God, that they've never dreamed of, that every church that, they're, that, that, that you've birthed in their heart would be able to be planted and every school would be able to be open and every ministry, God, would, would, uh, would flourish in the Dato. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, we pray protection specifically. We pray favor and blessing over Gil and Dolphy. We love you. We thank you. Thank you for these choice servants. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Love you guys. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Wow, God is uh, on the move. This is like the trifecta today. We've had, uh, we're gonna end with me. <laughs> so I don't know if that's good or bad. But anyway, uh, wow, I just feel uh, the presence of the Lord today. I'm, I'm in the third week. If you're joining us for the first time today, I'm in the third week of a series that I entitled Refuge. I wanna thank you for your giving. Um, it, it's because of what you do that makes it possible for them to do what they do. And so we're, we believe strongly that we're ascending church, we're a releasing church, and um, I, 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 I just i am so overwhelmed with the goodness of the Lord, and I'm so overwhelmed with the task that's ahead of us. And so thank you for your continued giving. Uh, as of Friday, uh, we were trying to raise $44,000 to, to, uh, to uh, acquire a, a, a series of, of trucks that provide supplies from a warehouse in Poland into Ukraine. I know for, uh, as of Tuesday, that truck had arrived and safely offloaded uh, uh, all of the supplies. There'll be another, uh, may have already happened a second time, but we needed to raise $44,000. As of Friday, we were at 40,000, so thank you for, thank you for your faithfulness. And I believe today we're just gonna go over the top. So thank you for your giving. If you're watching online, you can give uh, electronically. If you're here, you can give electronically. You can give on your way out. If you feel compelled today to earmark something for, uh, for Gil and Dolphy, certainly just earmark that Mission 10 Africa. We'll make sure every penny.
then he gets to them. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for, God, your faithfulness to us. And we pray today, Lord, that uh, the nations would proclaim your name. That those that are in darkness, God, that have never heard the name of, never heard the name of Jesus, that you would send someone to tell them that someone would go, Lord Jesus, and maybe it's someone in this room today. Maybe it's someone that's watching today. You would send someone to tell them about the love of Jesus. You've blessed us abundantly, God. We give back today with cheerful hearts, empty, empty hands, open hands, God. And uh, we know that you'll multiply those gifts. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. 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 The third week of this uh, series, I'm going to preach in Psalm 67 today. I think I'm actually going to pick this series up uh, again, maybe a little later in the fall. It's, uh, it, it's powerful. The Psalms are not only powerful, but they're expressive. The book of Psalms is such a beautiful collection of, of pure worship to God. Psalms encourage us to praise God for who he is and for what he's done. And they illuminate the greatness of God. They affirm the God's, that God is faithful in times of uncertainty and trouble. They, they remind us of the significance of the power of his word. Think about Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Think of Psalm 46. God, you're my refuge. You're my strength. You're an ever-present help in trouble. And I just challenge you, and I've been challenging you for the last few weeks. Is God your light? Is he your shelter? Is he your protection? Is he your refuge? And I'm gonna ask you one more time today. it be the last time, I promise, before we leave. Stand with me. Uh, turn to Psalm 67. I, I intentionally planned this psalm today because this is Mission Sunday because, because Psalm 67 is a missionary psalm. Psalm 67 is a call for missions. I'll go further than that. It's a call for missionaries. It's a call for us, followers of Christ, to be blessed, not for our own indulgence, but to be blessed, don't miss this, so that our joy, the joy that comes from being in relationship with Christ, the joy that comes from knowing that our sins are forgiven, the joy that comes from knowing that we are redeemed, that our joy will reflect his glory to the nations. It's a powerful thought. I pray that uh, today the Lord would open his word to our heart. Let's go to Psalm 67. I'm gonna actually ask you, I've been asking you to memorize a few verses. I'm gonna ask you to memorize the entire, hold on, it's only seven verses, okay? The entire Psalm 67, verse one through seven. Let's read it. May God be merciful and bless us. May his face smile with favor on us. May your ways be known throughout the earth, your saving power among people everywhere. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Let the whole world sing for joy because you govern the nations with justice and you guide the people of the whole world. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Then the earth will yield its harvest and God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us. And people all over the world will fear him. Lord, we love you. I pray that this missionary psalm would, would challenge us, maybe call some of us, Lord, to, to give, to go, to serve in a different way than maybe we ever have. We love you today and we praise you. Have me behind your cross. I want to be in step with you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. May be seated. I, I titled today's message, May the Nations Praise and know him, or know and praise him. This psalm is an Old Testament anticipation of events that are to come. I, I could say it this way. It's an Old Testament anticipation of New Testament events. It, it, it's, it's an anticipation of, of New Testament activities. And as, I, as I've already said, it's a missionary psalm. It's a psalm that reminds us the people of God, the church of Jesus Christ, it reminds us of our purpose and it reminds us of our mission. And this is a, think of it this way, this psalm is a not for us psalm. It's more like a for us, for them psalm. 
See, I often remind you that there are times that God does things specifically in your heart. God will do something for you, for me, for us, the people of God. And then there are times that God does something for you, for, for me, for us collectively, for the purpose of impacting others. It's God moving in you in order to flow through you to impact other people. And in this case, impact the nations. That's this psalm. This psalm is for the lost. This psalm is for the nations. This psalm is for those who have never heard. And you just saw two missionaries that are in a place. It's almost hard to comprehend in 2022 that there are places on this earth where no one has heard the name of Jesus. But we were reminded today that there are places that are lo so lost and so dark that they've never heard the gospel. God help us raise up missionaries to go into those difficult and hard places so that the name of Jesus can be proclaimed. So that every tribe and every tongue and every people and all nations and every language will worship and praise the Lord. See, God's purpose is to be known and praised among all the nations. Now, let me show you what I mean as we unpack this psalm. He desires, his will is to be known. Look in verse two. May your ways be known throughout the earth. His desire, his will is to be praised. Look at verse three. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. This psalm, much like Psalm 65 and Psalm 66, it's global. It's national. It's universal. May the nations praise you. May your ways be known throughout the earth. Let the whole world sing for joy. So church, the goal, the aim, the purpose of God is that the entire world would know and praise him. I believe it's not only the purpose of God, I actually believe it's the heart and the desire of God. His purpose and his desire and his heart is to be known and praised by all peoples of the world. Verse two, may your ways be known throughout central Pennsylvania. We have such a narrow view of the Great Commission. May your ways be known throughout the earth, your saving power among people, say it with me, everywhere. Verse three, may the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. And, and here's where we come in. You, you, you know this part, right? I'm reminding you today, this is where we come in. As followers of Jesus, as, as, as followers of Christ, we are compelled by God to make sure that his purpose, his heart, and his desire, we establish that that's to be known and praised throughout the earth. Our job is to make sure that the desire and the heart and the purpose of God is carried out on earth. To be known, to be praised, not just among people who gather in a church, but to be known and to be praised among all the nations of the world. We're compelled by God to make sure that his purpose and his heart and his desire are carried out. Remember I told you Psalm 67 is an Old Testament anticipation of something that is to come. It's an Old Testament anticipation of activities and events that are to come. We know them in the New Testament as the Great Commission. Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, because of that, because of the power and the authority that I've been given in heaven and on earth, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples, these new followers of Christ to obey all the commands I've given you. This is where it gets good. This is where, listen, God doesn't leave it up to you. He empowers you with the move of the Spirit, right? And be sure of this, I'm with you always. So while he's commanding and while he's urging and while he's, he's 
compelling us to go. He says, you're not gonna be alone. You don't have to do this by yourself. I'm gonna be with you. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So church, that's it. That's the goal. That's the aim. That's the command. That's the mission. Go and make disciples of all nations so he can be known and praised throughout the earth. That's the heart and the, and the desire and the will of God. And listen, don't miss this. That's why we do what we do on this hill. That is the reason why we do what we do. That is the compelling reason and motivation behind everything we do at CLA. It's the reason I pastor this great church. It's the reason I get up every morning. It's the reason I have breath in my lungs so he can be known and praised. It's the reason we do everything we do. And when I say that it's the reason we do everything we do, listen to your pastor today, I mean absolutely everything we do is motivated out of a desire for people to know and praise the name of Jesus. We sit in church today. It's the very reason that we sit here, Sunday morning worship, and what we're experiencing. We do this so he can be known and praised. Funding supplies and and trucks and medical relief into Ukraine so he can be known and praised. Sending medical teams to El Salvador and construction teams to El Salvador this year so he can be known and praised. It's the reason we gather here on Wednesday nights and we study the Bible. And it's the reason we have classes on Sunday morning and Wednesday nights so he can be known and praised. It's why I implore you to to see beyond your own desires and your own preferences so he can be known and praised. It's why we do Christmas one Land, so thousands of people can come, so he can be known and so that he can be praised. It's why we do Sunday school. It's why we do student ministries. It's why we've got hundreds of kids in kids town today. It's why we do celebrate recovery on Monday nights, so he can be praised and known throughout the nations. It compels us. It's why we do Sunday, Tuesday morning break. It's why we have, have food bank ministry. It's why we're on television now on ABC and CBS, not just so people can recognize me in the grocery store. We do it so that people can know and praise the name of Jesus Christ, so that the nations will be compelled to lift up his name and praise the name of Jesus. Listen, I'll give you more details as we move forward, but we're actively working on ways to translate our services into multiple languages and broadcast them literally around the globe. Not so we can be known, not so we can be famous, but so that he can be known and praised throughout the world. That's why we support over 200 missionaries, so he can be known and praised. Are you seeing it, church? Are you getting it? I have to tell you, I love every one of you, but it's not my job to make you nice and cozy and comfortable until Jesus comes back, and that may be very disappointing to some of you. And I have to tell you, that would make my life so much easier if I could do that. (laughs) But it's not my job. More than that, it's not my calling. And quite honestly, it's not yours either. You're not called to be settled You're not called to be comfortable. You're not called to be warm and and cozy until Jesus comes back. Church, you were made for more than that. God has a purpose and a design for your life that's greater than that. You were called to do that. It's not my job to spoon feed you 52 Sundays a year so that we can keep the lights on and keep the heat on. My job is to not give you three nice sermon points and a poem every week so that we can walk away and say, isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? My job is to inspire you. 
My job is to compel you to, to step out of what's comfortable. My job is to fan the flame of the gift of God in your life so that you will tell everyone you come in contact with that Jesus gave his life for them and he loves them. My job is to move you, to stir you up so that we won't sit complacent, so that we won't be satisfied. So I challenge you today, men and women of God, rise up, walk in what God has purposed and planned in your life, feel the destiny that he has for you. And in these last days, may we all heed the words of Jesus to his disciples. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send more laborers. That's why we do what we do. It's what motivates everything and every decision we make. So he can be known and praised. Every decision I make as a lead pastor, every organizational shift and adjustment that we make internally so he can be known and praised. Nothing's by accident, nothing is random, nothing is by chance. I'm, I'm, I'm unapologetic that everything we do is motivated so he can be known and praised among all nations. I have people often ask me, Pastor, what, what, where are we going as a church? What, 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 what's, our, what's our mission or our vision? And I, I, I tell them what I'll tell you today, go read the New Testament. Because our vision is his vision. And our plan is his plan. And the last time I checked, his vision and his plan hasn't changed. It's found in Mark 16, 15. Go into all the world and proclaim, preach, tell the good news to everyone. And see, I think something supernatural happens when when you do that individually and when we do that corporately. When, when you do that, when a church does that, when we make it our personal or corporate mission to make God known so that the nations will not only know him but praise him, I believe we open a supernatural door. I believe we open a supernatural door of God's blessing. I believe we open a supernatural door of God's favor. I believe we open a supernatural door of God's anointing. And you just saw it today as I recorded or I reported back to you about what we're doing in Ukraine. It opens a supernatural door of God's kingdom resources. And I believe this happens not only in our personal lives, because I think it happens in our, in our individual lives, but it happens corporately. When we're doing the will and the desire and the heart of God, remember what that is, it's to make him known and praised among the nations. When we are doing the will and the heart and the desire of God, you can't help, don't miss this, you can't help but reap the blessing and the anointing and the favor of God upon your life. And when we do that corporately, so when you do it individually, you can't help but reap the blessing of God. When we do it corporately as a church, we can't help but corporately reap the blessing and the anointing and the favor and the hand of God upon everything we do. See, I believe that God blesses his people and his church when they are making him known and praised among all the nations. It's the number one reason why I believe God has his hand on this church. It's the number one reason why I believe God continually blesses us. Listen, it's not because of what we have. And we have some great things. We're blessed, we have a great facility. But guess what, God could move without it. And I love it, and I'm thankful. And we're gonna steward this, this campus until Jesus comes back, right? <laughs> But we're not blessed because of what we have. We're not blessed because of how gifted we might be. Listen, God's not looking for a people or a church to bless because they have all the right stuff or they have all the right giftings or they have all the right things. He's looking for a people and a church that have decided that their main purpose, their one and only priority is to make him known and praised among all peoples of the earth. That's Judea and Samaria. Samaria and the uttermost parts of the world. 
God's not looking to bless somebody because of what they have. He's looking to bless them because of a decision that they've made in their heart. A decision that we have made corporately as a church. That we are about the lost. That we are about making him known and praised among all the nations. And listen, when God finds those kind of people, mm, come on. <laughs> When God finds those kind of people, when God finds those kind of people in a particular place that have decided that their main purpose and their main mission is to not be comfortable and not be selfish and not be satisfied, but it's to make him known among the nations and people, I promise those are the people and those are the places that he will pour his spirit out upon, that he will heal his blessing onto that he will lavish you with favor and he will empower us corporately within the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When God finds those kind of people, that's when he does supernatural and miraculous things. That's when the world gets changed. When people that love Jesus say, I'm gonna put my selfish desires aside. I'm gonna put my, my personal preferences aside. I'm gonna put all the things that I would like and all the things that I want aside and I'm gonna lock my gaze in on. I'm gonna fix my eyes on. I'm gonna fix my heart on one thing that my life, the reason I have air in my lungs today is to make the name of Jesus known and praised throughout all the earth. And that's the reason that I believe he's blessed us individually and corporately at CLA because we've made his purpose our purpose. And we've made his desire our desire. And again, our number one priority, if you ever wanna know what we believe as a church, <laughs> our number one priority and purpose and our desire is to make him known and praised among all the nations. I'm gonna ask Josh to come back. I preached myself out in about 15 minutes. <laughs> I wanna leave you with two quick thoughts. I encourage you to write these down. Number one, I firmly believe that God blesses his people for the sake of the nations. I wanna unpack that for you. And it's found in Psalm 67. I believe that God blesses us so that the nations will be blessed. And, and, and listen, Gil didn't even know what I was preaching on today. And isn't that what he just challenged us with? Look how instrumental the American church has been in the, in the global evangelization of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What do you think Satan's number one tactic would be to stop the number one force and influence on the evangelization of the world with the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, I believe God blesses us so that the nations will be, will be blessed, so that all people will hear the gospel. God blesses his people, us, Christ followers, for the sake of the nations. God promises blessing to his people because he wants them, don't miss this, he wants us to bless others. He blesses us. Kurt, Kurt Harris, where you at? Kurt, 2003, Kurt and I went to Africa for the very first time. 2003, we put our feet down in the bush and I looked at Kurt and I'm like, I think I wanna go home. <laughs> we heard lions and all the incredible things you hear about in a safari, but we were in a tent in the bush, right? That moment forever changed my life. That team of, we took 42 people in the bush and I thought, what in the world are we doing? It changed my life. It changed how I pastor. It broadened and opened my eyes to the heart and the desire and the will of God so that the nations will know and praise him. 
And Kurt has a line he's used over and over. And if you've been around Kurt very long, you've heard him say this, we're blessed to be a blessing to others. And whether Kurt knew it or not, that is, that's the heart of Psalm 67. That God blesses us so that we will bless others. God blesses you to be a blessing to others. God will bless a person, it goes further than that. I believe God will bless a church that is pouring itself out for the unreached peoples of the world. And I just have to tell you, missions is the heart of God. Look at the Great Commission. Missions is the heartbeat of God. And it must be the heartbeat of our church. I have to tell you, it's the heartbeat of your pastor. I've said this often. I feel like I'm a missionary trapped in a pastor's body. I wanted to go. God called me to stay and he called me to send. And I'm just so thankful every day that he put me together with a group of people that also feel compelled to send and to release and to give and to go. It's just a match made in heaven. We're blessed, we've been blessed so that we can bless others. God will bless you in your life and he will bless us corporately as we pour ourselves out for the unreached peoples of the world. See, I believe the more we move toward the lost, the more we move toward the hand and the blessing of God. The flip side of that is true. The more we move towards selfishness and entitlement, the further away we move from the hand and the approval of God. I have to tell you, CLA, we are a church. We're a church for the nations. We are a church for the nations. When, when, when you think of pre-COVID, all the places, sometimes six, seven, eight times a year, we would go literally around the world. This year, we're gonna go to El Salvador. Pastor Christian and Matt, as we speak, are in India. They sent me services, this, uh, pictures this morning of a service. Pastor Christian and Pastor Matt have both been preaching almost every day in India. We just sent... Casey Joy to El Salvador. My daughter's coming home from college for six days and she's moving for the rest of the year to El Salvador. We've got missionaries today from Tanzania. We are a church for the nations, for our community and for the nations. And our purpose and our priority is that we're trying with everything inside of us to make him known and praised among the nations. And I promise you, hear your pastor today, I promise you if we continue to ded dedicate ourselves to reaching the lost, to reaching the nations, God will continue to keep his hand on us and he will continue to bless us abundantly. So he blesses us for the sake of the nations. Second thought, I close with this. We must continue to have a generous heart for the sake of the nations. I thank you every week for your generosity. As, as a pastor, I couldn't be prouder of you. And I'm not just proud because of your generosity and because of how, how, how quickly you give. I'm proud because you understand the urgency of the times. You, you are aware because you see the landscape of the world in front of us. You are aware and understand the task at hand and the urgency. You have a generous heart and you have a radical commitment to make him known and praised among the nations. So I'm gonna continue to challenge you. I'm gonna continue to try with everything inside of me to do my job to inspire you, to fan the flame of the gift of God in your life and to challenge you. And listen, when I challenge you, I'm not just challenging you, I'm challenging myself. I'm gonna to continue to challenge you to live and to give like heaven and hell are at stake. Because they are. Because they are. For the sake of the nations, God has blessed us 
And he's given us a vision to send, to give, and to go. Would you stand with me? We've had a lot happen today. (laughs) And I'm sure your heart and your mind have moved in a lot of places. But I'm gonna ask you to do one thing as we close. I'm gonna ask you if you would just tell the Lord that you're available. You're available to give, you're available to serve, you're even available to go. If you remember a few years ago, COVID certainly had an impact on this, but we, had a, we launched Mission 10. And I had a hunger and a desire in my heart to see more people go than ever before. And we were praying for a thousand new people to go on missions trips from our church, to, to, to put your feet somewhere where they've never been before so that Jesus could be known and praised among the nations. And God dropped a big goal in my heart that we would have a hundred missionaries from within our church that would either go on short-term or long-term ministry assignments. It's it's unbelievable the people that have answered that call. And then my goal over the next 10 years was that we would give $10 million to missions. And I'm believing for all of those and more because I wanna make him known and praised among the nations. And I just love being a part of a church and a group of people that not only share my heart, but you share the heart of God. So would you just tell him today that you're available? Simple prayer. If you're not, don't, don't tell him. But if you are, would you just in your own way, heads bowed, eyes closed today, would you just say, God, I'm available. I'm available because I wanna make you known and praised among the nations. And God, I start with me today. I'm available, Lord. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll lay down whatever you want me to lay down. I'll give whatever you want me to give. I'll go wherever you want me to go. God, could we, as a group of people that gather on this hill, could we be people that say we are available to go where you want us to go, to say what you want us to say, to give what you want us to give, to do what you want us to do, to go where you want us to go. God, give us a heart of readiness. Give us a heart of availability. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for this great day when we can come together and our hearts could be aligned, our our hearts could come together. Now, Lord Jesus, as we leave, I pray that when we walk out of these walls, we walk out of this space, when we drive off of this campus, that wherever we go, Wherever our feet take us today, our number one priority would be to make you known and praised among all people. Put it in our heart, I pray. We're available today. It's the cry of our heart. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Amen. (laughs) Hey, I love you. Let's go change the world. God bless you. See you next week.